Yo, welcome to the K Says Sports Show, and I'm your host, Kane Bradfield. And y'all know my slogan, the fame is free, but the grind costs, baby. Y'all ready? Yeah, do it. All right. Yo, what's up, everybody? Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Kane Said. I'm your host, Kane Bradfield. Y'all know my slogan. The fame is free, but the grind costs, baby. Listen, man, I got a special guest in the house. Got somebody I've been dealing with for a while. Not only that, I got a co-host in the house, baby. Hey. We're going to talk a little bit, man. So, yo, how y'all doing? Swell. Good, good. How you doing? Good, yeah, I mean, yo, introduce yourself, big dog. Uh, I'm Coach Fanny, man. Dungeon certified. Um, man, been been training here for quite some time now. I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, my name is Kiki Tally. I also been training here at the dungeon for a while now. Like, just yeah. have to be here. Right. It's been a minute, right? <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, man. But yo, man. But listen, Key. You know, I'm glad you're here. You know what I'm saying? The show is about you, man. We're going to talk about your journey. You feel me? Yes, Let me tell you something now. Like, she for real, for real done the certified. Like, she been with me for a little minute. Wow. We've been grinding all kind of ways, man. So we're just going to talk about, you know what I'm saying, your life, dog. You feel me on that? Yes, sir. Sounds good. So, Key, tell the people where you're from, man. Give her that story. I am from Hogansville, Georgia. Hog Town? Yep. Hogansville, oh, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Born and raised, born and raised. Um, I attended Callaway High School. I actually graduated in 2017. Played all four years under Coach Martin. Um, actually, I was, man, I played a lot of sports. Callaway, softball, track, basketball. Um, From there, what can I say, man? No, hold on, free right there, free right there first. Right. Free that first. So Callaway, you know what I mean? So both of y'all got some Callaway yeah. vibes going on. I mean, yeah. did y'all feel the vibes floating around in the room? Or <laughs> did y'all feel, I'm talking about, did y'all know that before we started? I did. Yeah. I, I, I put two and two together. Okay. I'm yeah. talking about, it was vibes or just, just, I just want to know if it's Callaway vibes. Like, <laughs> is that a thing or not? Not yet. Okay. Not, not yet. Okay. Not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so Key, you know what I mean? So I mean, let's do the high school for a minute. Okay. Let's dive on that. So you said you played under Coach Martin for what? You said four years, right? four years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So. When did the love of basketball happen in high school? Man, it actually happened. It had it happened before then, but like when the love really, really, really happened when Coach Martin actually took me under his wing and okay. exposed me to how talented I really was. Okay, like the good thing about him, he don't care like what grade you in, like yeah. freshman all the way to senior. You got that potential, and he see it in you before you see it in you. He gonna hammer you. He like yeah. he gonna hammer it into you. And me at the time being young, I'm just like, shh, I'm what's just going on? yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know what's really going on. But he would constantly tell me, just like, don't take it to the heart. Like if I'm not on you, it's because you ain't taking it serious. Yeah, and I see right. more in you than you see in yourself. Mm. So I started. I really, really grasped that love for it my freshman year when he was just like on me about it. And I played with and against so many great. Guards. Okay. So I had that opportunity to just like, okay, you know what? I can do this. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to take over y'all. And then when y'all leave, I know what to do. Mm. So like, it was just, he kept, he, when he put me under his wing, that's when I really started taking it serious. That's I hard. That. So did. my question though, I mean, you used it a few times. You even introduced the question okay. with love. Uh, I, I think I know the answer, but do you love the game of basketball or do you like the game of basketball? I love it. Like, I eat, breathe, sleep, That's watch love. it. Yeah, I, I love yeah. it. It's love. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah, yeah. And I agree. I mean, the way you work out, I can tell that. Agree. Yeah, yeah. But, but Kiba, at, at one time, you was a softball player or something, right? Yeah, I actually played, I actually played softball for Callaway all four years, too, um, I loved I loved the game of softball too, but I didn't I realized I didn't love it more than basketball. I felt like at the time I was just doing it because I could and because mm, I had like those that. athletic abilities to do so. And it was Even easy. With, yeah, it was easy for me, especially mm -hmm. like I was one of I was one of the best outfielders in the state right. for Callaway and I played under some good coaches. I played against some good competitions. Right. I know like 
Even a lot of people don't know, even before I started playing in high school, I actually played travel ball. I played under a coach from LaGrange High. He had a travel ball team going on. So I played under him for a couple of years. Okay. So when I got in high school, it was like second nature, just yeah, like it basketball. Over. Yeah, it just transferred over. Right. So I really lost my love for it when I broke my nose, my state. My own senior year. Wait a minute game. now. Wait a minute now. Yeah. Hold on. You even to slide that by and not give her that story now. Give me that story now. So we were on um, second round state playoffs. We played Rock Mart, who was a very, very good team. Always. Um, I never, that was, that was actually my first ball that I dropped in the outfield. Like my whole four years of playing of front on Calloway High. So I was in center field, and the way the field is leveled, the sun is just directly down. Dang, yeah, and I told tough. the coach, I was like, hey, coach, I can't, I can't see, I can't see. And I'm trying to adjust and move around. Right. I heard it come off the bat. She she, she was a dog. Like, I yeah. can give it to her. She was a dog. Like, yeah. when it came to talk about, she was a dog. So, like, she was at the plate. She hit it. Everybody thinking it's going in the air, but I can hear. I can just hear Ryan on the ground. Then it came up, and it hit my glove and just boom. Hold on, yeah. And caught it, you. It caught me. And I didn't know, like, my adrenaline pumping, so I'm just like, where the ball go? Right. Then I turn around. A guy over the fence, he's just like, no, lay down, lay down. And I look down. <laughs> right. And I'm just like, did she hit me in the chest? Like, <laughs> right. I'm bleeding. It looked like, oh, God. Oh, hit. man. And it was just after that, I was like, man. I Yo, just... let me tell you something crazy, though, man. So when I was... People feel that. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm about to say something, yeah. though. So when I was in People elementary, I haven't bounced back yet, though, from this. Yeah. Yeah. Elementary, I remember, dog. And I ain't trying to brag. I'm from brag a little bit. I remember I used to boom that ball on the fence. Yeah. You ain't trying, but you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to boom that thing on the fence. Like, pow, pow. And the coach was like, oh, man, who we'll get you to play? It was softball, though. Get you to play baseball, whatever. So I'm like, little homie, knocking the ball out. One time I was in the outfield. Yeah. So I still remember to this day, y'all. Uh, somebody hit the ball. I missed that thing. Bam! Yep. And I haven't bounced back. I haven't played yeah. baseball. Well, now I play softball, but I refuse to go in the outfield. Yeah, it's refuse crazy. To. A lot it's of traumatizing. People, yeah, a lot of people they don't realize it. And with me, like I'm glad I play with the class that I play with and against. Like, for instance, playing against Lauren Kersey. A dog. She's yeah. a dog. Shout out to Lauren. Yeah, yeah shout out to Lauren, man. Hey, hey, look, she on the wall now. You yeah, know she, she on, on that, that wall. Yeah, she on that wall. Yeah. Yeah. Lauren, and it's, an, it's another girl from True. I played up under her dad too. Mm. Catcher, bomb catcher. Like I gotta salute her too. Boss lady. Yeah, gotta be. to my boss lady. Yeah. Shout out dog. to Maddie. She a dog. That's her yeah. name. Maddie. Yeah. yeah, she on the wall. You see she, on the yeah, wall she too. She a dog. Like her and Lauren. I feel like throughout my whole high school career, those were the ones who really gave me a run for my money. Mm. I'm not even gonna lie to you, Lauren. She can she can rip that thing. Yeah. I remember we played them at Lagrange, and I when I stole that home run for her, I couldn't even believe it. Right, right, like, right. Man, this is crazy. Dang. Like. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I played against some, I played against some dogs. Man, that's like, what's up, though, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, right. Real life memories. Okay, so, so okay, let's go now. All right, so when you got to high school, you know what I mean? You know, you had an incident with the, with the softball, whatever. But when did you really, really swallow that red pill in basketball? Like, you know, when did you really do it? Like, after I broke, after I broke my nose, I knew it was going to sit me back. And that my journey was going to be really different from what I had really just wanted it to be. So after I broke my nose, I was out. I was out for like six weeks. I missed basketball trials. I let Coach Martin know what was going on. I was like, Coach, I don't think I could. Yeah. I had that doubt. Like, I was just like, so is this just it? Like, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Right. Like, I wanted to go to college and play both sports that I love, but one sport that I love took me out. So now I'm just like, I was lost at a such. So when Coach Martin actually gave me the chance to come and play without really trying out, he was just like, you know what? I you know. already proved yourself. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. that's how he was. But yeah. with me, the type of person that I am, I was just like, Coach, it wouldn't be fair. Like, I feel like I should go through some kind of trial. I know I could play. But it's only fair. Like, I don't want it to look like, you know, you just Favorite giving tism. it to me. Like, yep, I don't yep. like that. And so I really locked in and dialed in when he had me to come back. And I'm in practices. I'm trying to adjust. Like, I still had that fear. Like, man, my nose kind of, like, it's fragile. I don't want to get hit. Right. So, like, a lot of obstacles that I ran in, the biggest one that I ran into, it was wearing a mask. While mm. trying to just still do what I've been doing. But, like, now you got this berry in your face. So, it mainly just that pill was hard for me to swallow because at times I'll just be like, I'm not gonna, 
I can't do it. Like yeah. I was gonna let something so small just stop take me right. out of it. Yeah. 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 So that that's when your mental toughness kicked in. Yeah, that's mm. when it kicked it in, kick in. And I was just like, this is not the type of person I am. Right. I'm gonna feel even worse if I just give up right now right. when this is something I could just work with and just Get better with overcome. Yeah, I could just overcome. Right, that. right, right. Because some people get defeated off that. Yeah, like, some definitely. people quit. Like Most shut definitely. it down. Yeah. Most uh, definitely. So, you, hey man, how long did you wear your, the mask though? I wore the mask. You, you got any pictures? I it's think I, I think I do. I should. Pull that joint out right now. I didn't think he, <laughs> he still want to see it. He want to see it. You know I want to see that joint. Look like. I got you. He want to see it. I wore you the that joint though. He's rocking it. I was like, yeah. and the, like, it was crazy because like. <laughs> In rival games like Lagrange and Callaway, like you will look up, you know Lagrange. I could give them their props too. Like, yeah, I even though I'm Callaway to the day I die. Like, Most I definitely. love Callaway, Most but Lagrange student section, they will do you the worst, the worst way. way. <laughs> like that is, they, I, they didn't have that when we was in school. They I would really, love that. I like, would love that. Man, they will do you the worst way, and that's the <laughs> thing about them. Like if they know you, if you're a big name, like yeah. I wore my, I wore the mask all up into that game, and that was like six games in. And we had, it was a away game. We had to go play them. I was like, man, I don't want to wear this mask out there. They just, they crazy. I'm walking out. We finna get ready to run out. You look over to the studio station. Somebody got a big fat head of me with my mask Shut on. Shut up, kid. And I'm just like, LaGrange just, they don't miss. Like, Dang. they really don't miss. <laughs> That's so funny. See, I, them, see I, I wish we could have experienced that. Like, we experienced, like, not student section, but the crowd. The crowd. Like, yeah. The crowd was, like, yeah. Like, it, it's crazy. I it was, was like, oof. they don't miss. Then I'm over there taking the ball out. They was like. You like we ain't doing it to get on your nerves. I was like, it's I know, but it's just so like crazy because y'all just don't miss. Like, how did y'all know? That's like, oh, it's all in the paper. Like, right, yeah. right, right. And yeah. then like I wanted to, you know, they get in your head, but like you said, that mental toughness kick in. So Got after to. that, I just I stopped wearing it, but I still had that doubt in my head. And actually, Maddie's dad, he refereed one of my games, and he he was talking to me. He was like, you know. Like you and my prayers, like keep doing what you're mm. doing. I know, like it's it's kind of hard, and that's what really kicked in for me. I was just like, I can't stop. Like yeah. I, just, right. I have to just do it. Shout out to Stormy for showing a little love. Yeah, exposing that heart a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. So so key, you know what I mean. So okay, once you um, well I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm gonna show you love on this one though. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've noticed in here, you know, I'm I've been around a, a few ballers, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying from from a male perspective. But from from a female perspective, yo, you probably one I, I'd have been around who who want it, yeah. right? Like you know what I'm saying. I've seen girls work out, seeing girl, but I've seen I seen you. You feel me? It's a different yeah. though. Right. You know what I mean, so I won't salute you on that one though. I I I'll, I'll have to concur. Yeah. Um, just the simple fact, I've seen you not miss um, Jazzy Bell week. You know what I'm saying? If you do it. I'm sure it was for a reason, not because, man, I'm not going in there on Jazzy Bell week. Right. You know what I'm saying? I've seen you by yourself, seen you with a one or two of y'all, and you still grind. Yeah. And I and I know, or we know for a fact, Jazzy Bell, people looking for them. They where, dodge where, that where, thing. Where, where they go, yo, you know what I'm saying? My, yo, I chased them one day, though. Uh -oh. <laughs> I came in here, uh -oh. I, was like, I was like, yo, where y'all at? <laughs> uh -oh. She said she had to, uh, you had to do something. I had to go with my physical. Coach, I couldn't even, I couldn't even stand up at my physical. I couldn't even stand up. They were trying to take my height and weight. My knees were just buckling. I was like, man, this is, dog, this shouldn't even be like that. I, call, I try to call her out. Like, yo, where you at? Now, Jazz got you running? No, I'm taking the physical. I was like, man. But, but so, Keith, you know what I mean? So what happened after high school? You know, what made you want to go to, to continue basketball? Right? Right. So right after high school, like, like I said, I broke my nose in softball. So that kind of took away all my offers, my big offers at that for softball and basketball. Mm -hmm. I know I had, um, I got offered from Jacksonville State for softball and basketball on the full ride, but after I broke my nose and I had to sit out some important games, you yeah, know, right, they were right. kind of just like, we, we The business kicked in. Yeah, in. they just, Lame. they kept Man. kicking in. So like, I didn't really have much to just go off of. And right. I knew I wanted to, I didn't want to give basketball up just yet. Right, right. So I wanted to go to school. So I looked into the military. I was like, I want to go to school, but I don't want to be in debt. Right. At that, that's, so that's I a went smart off. Move. Yeah, so I went into the um, military. I was gone for a couple of months, and that was another boundary that I can't that I overcame because I was like, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to get basketball up, but I know it's gonna be there when I get back. Okay. So that kind of taught me more of mental toughness that if you can get through this, you can really get through anything. I like that, and that created a foundation for me as far as like you know, this is what you got to do. 
reach out to coaches, let them know, like do everything. Like it wasn't easy. It wasn't an easy process. Like, of course you're going to get more no's than you get yes. So Always. When I came back and everything, I actually had enrolled in the Georgia Military College because I wanted to start pursuing my degree. Okay. And that really gave me more time to just lock in and get in the shape that I need to get into if I wanted to play basketball again. Mm. So as I was there, like – I'm still in that military mindset. I'm getting up every morning. I'm going to work out, and I'm going to class. That's yeah. just it. No basketball, no nothing. So I had to kind of balance it out, and I'm just like, okay, since you can't play basketball, like, put more time into working out. So mm. I would spend more time, like, working out. I'm reaching out to coaches, and, of course, they're just like, you know, we're done recruiting right. or yeah. you come in as a walk-on. So it was just like, okay, I know I'm going to get more no's than yes, but, like, you can't stop trying. Yo, so I'm saying this, though. Now, did the military – Give you that mindset? Cause I'm telling you, that's first of all. I will feel saluted. Yeah. Like, you, you, nah, nah. Go ahead. If you want nah. to, go man. Like just based on what you just said, man. Like, and you're how old? Eighteen? No, I'm twenty-two. No, no. At, at this time. Oh yeah, at the time. Yeah, I'm eighteen. Eighteen. So as an eighteen-year-old kid, man, that's that's Boy, commendable. That's, like, right. man, to to be able to foresee what's going on, to be able to structure, organize your life. And to know what you have to do to 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 continue on, man, that's that, that's that's, yeah. that's amazing. Real. So I mean, so, but, yeah, come on, man. Like I, I really want to, you know, what I mean, cause maybe you can like, you know, what I'm saying, help somebody in this situation right here. So at 18, like Coach said, at 18, who'd you have around you to help yeah, coach that, you through this? Man, like, that was a quick that went through honestly, my head. Really? Like, are you by yourself? At the time, like, I, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. A recruiter came to my school, and I just talked to him off real. Like, now, I ain't talking about military. You talking about, I'm talking like, about to even general. say, like, like, ask all these questions, to do all these yeah, steps. Yeah, with the basketball to, like, and the answer like, before who, school. Who's guiding you? My AAU coaches, actually. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Coach okay. Tiska and Coach Vacha Garrett Hammett. Like, yeah, they, yeah. they actually Salute. helped me through. Good. Shout out to him, man. Like, because at first I really didn't know what to do. I was just like, you supposed to really reach out to. And also, Miss um Miss Godwin, Terry Godwin's mom, she helped me. Okay. She helped me a lot, like through yeah. the whole Shout process. Out. Cause I was letting her know. I was just like, you know, I still want to play. But I know my path is gonna be way different from everybody else's now because of everything. Right. Like I'm taking a longer path. So she kind of cool. helped me out with the process. She was like, you know, you just gotta bring it to them how you want to bring it to them. Mm. Tell them, like sometimes you gotta start. From square one to get to where you at. Like sometimes you have to be a walk on in order to, you know, work yep. hard to get this full yep. ride. So they taught me, they walked me through the process of how I'm supposed to properly reach out to college coaches and everything like that to get me started. Right. Man, you you, you that's 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 dope. Like I'm a, I'm gonna shout them out. Like yeah. that's to to for them to do that, um, and not having to do that, like that's that's major. Yeah. You right. know what I'm saying? Because like a lot of people think the process is you shine in high school, you get the letters in the mail, you get the shoebox, and you just, what school I want to go to. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that happens, but that, like you said earlier, like, that's not everyone's path. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when, whenever whenever a curveball come, you know what I'm saying, you got you to gotta break, and then, you know what I'm saying, and, and you got to hit it. Hit it in stride. Mm. Uh, Everybody's path is not going to be the same. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that that's major. Like, that's major, major. I did that. Like, I super salute that. Yep. I, like, double salute it. So, so, Key, you know, we're going to talk about, you know what I'm saying, you in college. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about you um, juggling. You know what I'm saying? Juggling, you know what I'm saying, life. You know what I'm saying? And also continue pursuing. You know I mean, because no, no, coming out, you went to what college first? I went I'm, to Bernal. After um, Georgia Military College, I transferred to Bernal University. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So My wife talk- just got a doctorate from Bernal. Yeah. For real? Yeah. Shout out. <laughs> so you know what I mean? So y'all got a little vibe in here going on right now. You know what I mean? So so I'm, I'm saying uh, though, you know what I mean? So uh let's talk about that process. You talk okay. about you, you know, you know, leaving the military, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, going to what Bernal. Bernal. Look yeah. at me on that. You know what I mean? Oh, I see you on the wall walking that Bernal jersey. Oh right yeah, there. oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but now, but but take us through that process of, of you being in the military. Again now, now in the military, you're not hooping. Yeah, you not, not at all. You feel all. me? So how did mm-hmm. you convince Someone to give you a chance with no film. So it was it was hard. Like it's really really hard because these days, well, when I first came out, like the military, and I'm trying to process like going to school and everything. I only had my high school film. Mm. So a lot of coaches now, 
I didn't know this at the time, but some of them, they actually go off of your high school film. It depends on what high school you go to, though. Of course. So it really depends on what high school you go to. So I know when I reached out to Coach Stewart from Bernal, he was like the last person I reached out to because I was just like, he's probably done recruiting too, but I'm still going to try. And I let him know the situation. I was like, hey, like I actually just came back from training and I'm looking to transfer and I would like to have the opportunity to play with you and like mm. prove myself because I still – want to play basketball and I'm letting them know I was like I still have my high school film if you want to see that I don't have college film and I'm still in pretty good shape and he just so happened to tell me he was just like oh yeah I know you was in the military and I, I was actually one of your late recruits I just didn't know that you were I didn't know if you were still interested in playing so he, he gave me that opportunity and he gave me that chance but like you know sometimes they pitched this idea to your parents. So, like, I right. got there, and then I'm Something just different. like, yeah, it was different. It's called recruiting, baby. Welcome to that world. Yeah, you know like, what I, mean? so I, get, I get there, and I'm just like, I'm working hard, this, that, and the third, and I'm not playing. And I'm just like, hey, coach, you know what I got to do? I'm trying to come to you as an adult. So, like, what do mm. I have to do in order to prove to you that I'm, I can play? Like, I deserve yeah. more playing time. He was like, oh, you still doing what you got to do? And I'm at the time, I'm juggling grades, and then Already. I'm in the military. So he's knowing my situation. Like some weekends, on weekends, I have to leave because I have to do my military duties. But I'm still on top of my work, and I'm still I'm trying to play still. So that like it brought me to I played like I played a few games, but in those few games, I feel like I proved myself to like I deserve to still play. Mm -hmm. But in my head, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to really play like that. So I had already in my mind, I was like, well, Mar, you know, maybe it's time for me. I gotta go somewhere else. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, then I ended up at Southern Crescent. Okay. Coach okay. Seafield. Yeah, shout out to Coach. Yeah. So, okay, you know what I mean? So let's talk about you as a player. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If if, if I was um, a – go ahead. What kind of player are you? That's yeah. what I want to know. Yeah. I've been holding on to that one. <laughs> basically, what, what, basically. I've been saying, what kind yeah. of player are you? Yeah. Um, I'm, very uns I'm very unselfish, but I'm, I also know how to be a leader as well. Like – I'm the type of player, I'm going to make sure my teammates get it before I do. Because at the end of the day, I know that I'm going to get what's mine. So are you a point? Yes, I'm a point okay. guard and a shooting okay. guard. I'm the type of player, like, if my teammates don't understand or if my teammates are down and we in the game, like, I'm going to pick your head up. Like, okay. we in this together. I got your back. You got my back. That's how it is. But I'm not – I'm very unselfish, and I also know how to be a court general okay. without yeah. having to really be – as vocal as I am, but I'm vocal when I need to. Well, I'm about to ask you, are you a vocal player? Yeah, like, I'm vocal. I'm not the type that, like, if you mess up, I'm just like, nah, 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 nah. Like, that's not how I am because, mm. like, we human, we're going to mess up. Right, of course. But I'm just the type that... But then, too, are you afraid to get on to somebody, too? Because that's part of it, too. Like, like yes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, certain players, you know what I'm saying? You got to, like, Yeah, you they... have the ones, they don't listen. But in order to be a leader, especially, like, on the JUCO level, like... It's a dog eat dog world. Like, Most definitely. you have to get, if you can't take criticism, you can't take constructive criticism, it's never gonna work. Like, that chemistry isn't gonna work. Right. So, like, me, I'm the type of player that I can get on to you, but you can know that it's constructive criticism. Like, we're not gonna bicker back and forth. We either gonna figure it out or we both gonna get in trouble. Like, we gotta figure something. We <laughs> gotta true. figure something nah, out. Nah, you on something. Yeah, okay. we gotta figure something out. And, like, one of, like, my AAU coach, like Coach Gary said, like she always said me, and it sticks with me to this day. She was like, it's a difference between a hooper and somebody who just played basketball. It's love and light. Yeah, she yep. was just like, love it's and a light. difference yep. between a love hooper and, and somebody who can play basketball. A hooper is somebody you can get out there and you can get a bucket for your team. Yep. Regardless, like no matter the situation, you can get a bucket for your team. Somebody who's just a basketball player, you just really just, you have them people that just go through the motion. Right. They just, they know the fundamentals, but right. they're not really in it. Mm -hmm. And to me, honestly, I consider myself, honestly, I consider myself a hooper because, like, when it get down to the nitty-gritty, I'm a dog. Like, I'm going to get it. Like, we going to You going to rumble. Get it. Yeah, right. we going to, yeah. like, somebody going to win. The best like, man win. Yeah. We're the best woman. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, so, so Keith, uh, I'm, I'm going to look. I'm back up for a second, though. Say something about this. You know, I felt what you were saying earlier about, um, you know what I'm saying, when you trying to go to, to a school and don't have film. Yeah. So, man, when I was in uh, JUCO, mm -hmm. This is my JUCO. When I was in JUCO, man, I wanted to play D lineman yeah. at my next level, at, at my four year, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I played linebacker. I was like a 260 pound linebacker, yeah. right? Now I remember calling the coach, say, yo, don't you watch my film? Mm 
<laughs> Picture me being a D lineman. Like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't yeah. have no female D lineman. I mean, but it worked though. Yeah. You feel me? Because I'm thinking, if I put on 20 more pounds, I'm going to be a super fast D lineman yeah. instead of an overweight linebacker. Overweight linebacker yeah. You feel me? And it worked. I'm going to get me shot at the league, yo. You know what I mean? So it worked though. I, so I see what you're saying about it was tough yeah. pitching that to people. But all you need to want that one yes, dog. Yeah. That's all, so all you need that one yes. yes, man, and for them to believe in it. Yeah. So shout out to Savannah State. So you know what I'm saying, believe in it. So Keith, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, you, about, you about to say something? Nah. Yo, <laughs> so, so let me ask you this, though, Keith. You know what I mean? Now, this is to the, you know what I mean, to the um, to the females out there locally. Who's, who's out hooping? OK. How can we get more girls to want it like you in this area. To love versus like. How can we get that? What are we missing? What are we missing around here? You know, I don't think, I think you really just got to have that mentality. Like, I feel like a lot of female athletes, and I dealt with this at one point in time too. Like you look at it, it's, it's very stereotypical because a lot of female athletes, you know, it's rare that you find that one who really, really yeah. want it because in the back of their minds, it's just like, I'm done at the high school. Like it's all about male sports. But, like, I feel like if it took for me, like, to run into some females who, like, really dogs, like, going to camps and going to, like, open gyms and seeing that somebody maybe, like, two, three years younger than me, they out here, they want it, they getting all yeah. this, they doing that. Yeah. And it took for me to just really just lock in and be like, dang, like, this is what it takes. Like, somebody got to really be at you and, like, coming at you for you to just want it. Like, I always have that mindset that, like, Ain't nobody take it away from you. Like, if you want it, then you can get it. All you got to do, like, work. All you got to do is just work for it. Like, the pain is temporary. Yeah. The pain is temporary. Like, you go, you have that mentality, like, okay, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to kill this practice. Because the way you play, the way you practice is the way you're going to play. Right. Like, if you go in there and you, you're you not really with it for real, like, you're not really going to get anything. Don't get out of it. But I, I think at the, at the bare minimum end of the day, I, I just still think this basketball could just pay for school. Like, yeah. if it, at the bare minimum, like, nobody don't want no college loans. Like, they right. don't yeah. want that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I, I just think, like, like you, like, I, we have to figure out a way just to get kids, like, male and female, just to understand that concept. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if NBA is not your dreams or aspirations and, like, just go to school and experience it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like versus going to school, you know, one year out of here, like, man, just hold on to it. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. it's something good with paying out. Because, like you just said, it's only hard work and it's temporary pain. Yeah. And you never know what can come out of that. Never know if you don't cross the finish line. So, mm -hmm. yeah. that we, we got to do better at that. Right. So, look, look, Key, you know what I mean? As of late, man, you know, everybody been talking about, you know, um, you know even the playing fields, you know what I'm saying, with male and female athletes mm -hmm. at a professional level, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? What, in, in, in your opinion, do you think that's possible to even the playing field with male and female? As far as, like, maybe I go a little deeper, help you out. Uh, like, uh, salaries. Things like that. Do you think that or or, or um, endorsement? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Would it ever be even playing field, or do you think, nah, coach, it'll never be even? I even. feel like at one, I question. feel like at one point it will be even, because that's just like comparing NBA and WNBA. You got some dogs in the WNBA, but if you look at some players in the NBA, you look, you compare them, and you're like, they should be getting paid the same. For instance, look at Brittany Grinder. Look at LeBron James. He's a good he's a good player. She is too. Good. But like <laughs> Right. right. Uh, like, come on, no, Key. Look, don't get don't get me wrong, LeBron. Yeah. LeBron a dog, but like Key. He a dog. Coach yeah. Generational dude. Coach, right. I'm a, coach, I'm a KD fan. No. Uh, I, I mean, guess that's that. okay too. But, but him too though. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but nah, but him too though. Like, like, but, but I'm saying this though. All right, and, 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 and don't jump me, don't jump me. It, it's just how I'm feeling. You know what I mean? I'm I'm speaking from a Business standpoint. Yeah. Follow me now, right? Yeah. So, um, do you think the WNBA can bring in enough revenue to pay the women? You know true, what I mean? The reason true. why the men get the money. Because they got the seats. They, they got the seats. It, yeah. So, talk to me. In, in your opinion, what would it going to take for that to happen in WNBA? What's missing, I'm saying? Honestly... 
That's a million dollar question. That's a million dollar question, though. It is. But you know, like, honestly, a lot of people don't really watch the WNBA. That's what I'm saying, though. So, what are it going to take to watch it, though? Because, you know, because Britney came in dunking. You got a few girls who dunking. That's what I'm saying. They coming in dunking, and that's still not, like, that's a hard question. Yeah. That's a so, hard so, question. And I think that's the reason why the women are not getting paid. That's the reason. That's the reason, right? <laughs> right. Like, they don't sell out games. Yeah. Like, they don't sell them out. I, I just think over time, it's going to get better. I would love to say that they would catch up with the NBA, but when you see $230 million, right. you see, like, yeah. that's, hey, a that's, long, tough, that's a long way. Like, that's a long way. Like, that's, a long way. that's a long but way. But I, I think overall, it's going to get better just on the strength of, I think, like, it may not be here, but girls are hooping somewhere. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it might not be in LaGrange, but mm-hmm. they're hooping they somewhere. somewhere. But see, the women, though, but I'm going to tell you what's going on, man. And Key, I don't know if you like you, you might help me on this one. I feel like for the women to make money, they gotta hoop year round. Yeah. They, they, they gotta go overseas, overseas yeah. come back. Then come back, go right to the WNBA. Yeah, like WNBA. soccer. Yeah. Right. You gotta go year round. Yep. Yeah. And it, it is a lot of wear and tear. Right. But I, I just think like, like the girls who are playing, they're gonna get more skilled. Like they're gonna yeah. start doing more things that guys are doing. You're going to see more Euros. You're going to see more dunks. You're going to see more step backs. You're going to see behind the backs and mm-hmm. no yeah. looks. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's the stuff that make you want to watch it. There we go. Yeah. So there we go. once that start increasing, then that's when you're going to get fans and seats. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that's what it's going to take. That's why I was saying, like, even though we're not playing as much here as, as, as we would like and as we could, but people are playing and developing – Everywhere else. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So Makes sense. That, Makes that's sense. what I think. That's that's my opinion on it. Yo, yeah. here's, here's a good question. So both of y'all. So I had a conversation with, with, with my partner, man, probably about six months ago. I asked y'all the question. How far are we away from seeing a female? How far are we away? Real wild. That's a lot. To me, now this me. I don't know. You may have a Keep I feel I like I I can agree with you on that, but then again, like a lot of female, a lot of females are evolving, even on the high Keith, school. Level. Give me the years. How far we away, Keith? We from ten. seeing somebody? We ten or better. Yeah, like ten. Like ten you, you talking about women? Yeah, I'm like, talking about, about yes. Yeah. The back and like yeah, we yeah, good. like Yo, ten or better. So I'm talking to my boy. I said eight to ten. Yeah. I said 8 to 10. Better, yeah. Now, let me tell you something, y'all. Other day on IG, I can't think of that girl. Now, y'all about to make me look it up. She was doing, uh, uh, uh. Like, I was like, okay. I think I saw, I think yeah, I saw you, her. You know what I mean? Because I shared her, I shared her on my story. Yeah, I, I saw her on my story. You know what I mean? She was doing, like, they were bounce pass to her. She was. And she now, did. Yeah, yeah, I saw it on overtime, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so they're telling me, though, y'all. We, we get, it's coming. Like, it's coming, I'm telling you, like, it's coming, like. It just it just the the gap. It just the, a bigger yeah. gap. That's yeah. all thing it is. Like ten years. You think ten? I think yeah, ten. I say ten. Eight to ten. That's why I say two. Some, some, some old vertical maxes. Some, some old, yeah. Some old squat yeah. jumps and yeah, they coming. Yeah, for sure. Dang. Yeah. So that person right now maybe just running outside at eight, at a, as an eight year old right now. Yeah. Ten year old they're chilling. Yeah. Don't even know that she's next. Yeah. She about to get that big and that's the right crazy there. part. That's that's the crazy yeah. part about it. Like you never know. Nah, you don't. Like, you really don't know your path until you get in it. Until you get yeah. in that thing, though. Until you get in it. But and, go ahead, go, go. No, nah, I was just about to say, like, it, and it's so weird. Like, you just said somebody endorsements. Like, that's the other part about college that, that the eight-year-olds, the ten-year-olds, the juniors, the seniors now can take advantage of. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, that's another incentive to take this series. Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I can go to school and make an M? In yeah. school? What? Or oh, uh, 500,000 in, in school or whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 100,000, 20,000, 15. What? Come on. Yeah, like what I got to do? Sign me school. up. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So, so, so come on, kid. Come on, kid. Let's tap on that, though. Okay, the NIL. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? How do you view that? Or do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing as far as people being able to earn money in college now for their likeness? I feel like it's. I feel like it's a good thing because, like, it's giving Great. you a chance to like get your name out there, not only in sports but other stuff, like yeah. the stuff that you like. So I really feel like it's a good thing, and that was like the best decision they. I think made. so too. Me too. Yeah. I just don't think. I only thing my my fear is 
like people just accepting anything. Right. It's gotta get police. Like, that's that's, that's gotta my get police. only thing. Like, like that. That's one of the things what I respect about Ross. Like Ross only endures things that he himself like endeavor. You know what I'm saying? The things that he do. So, so as a kid, it's easy to say, "Look, I'm gonna give you fifty thousand. You put this on your story. You know what I'm saying? It right. can be anything. That's that's the that's my only mm-hmm. only fear. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? If we can police that. I, I'm like I'm all for you're it. All for that I'm thing. all for it. Cause mm-hmm. if you gonna make money on me, why can't I make money on myself? Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, right. That don't even make sense. That's mm-hmm. hustling backwards. Man, easy backwards, easy backwards, man. But yo, key man, man, I sure appreciate you. You know what I'm oh, saying? No coming in, you know what I mean? To, to talking with us, man. Um, uh, so so typically, man, when I, when I end a show, I always tell the I always tell the guests to lead the people with something positive. You know what I mean? So. You feel man, get your mind right. But lead the viewers, lead the listeners with something positive. Though. Drop some dimes now. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> drop the few. Drop them bars in here today. You drop the few. So you know, you know what I mean? Leave something positive, dog. Yeah. Like, whether you know it or not. Um, one thing I want to say, honestly, to leave not only adult viewers, but kids as well. Like, don't ever let nobody tell you that you can't do something. Like, mm-hmm. don't ever have that doubt. Like, some days it might be hard, but if it's something you really want, you're not going to let anything really just stop you from getting it, no matter Thanks. what it is. Like, yeah. you, if a brick wall put in front of you and it's standing between you and what you got going, like, you're going to do out whatever. Way. Yeah, you're going to figure out a way. So don't let nobody ever tell you that you can't do something and always, like, work hard. And another thing that, like, I just, it just dawned on me, like, a lot of female athletes, I noticed this too, even in my friend group, like, I noticed it. Like, some people, some females, like, they want this dream, but you're not willing to just sacrifice. Like, sacrifice Ooh, the little stuff. That's like, different uh, bars. Especially in Toes? high school, like from high school to college. Like, you know, once you get on that college scene, you got the party, you got the yeah. homecomings, you got all this. But if it's something you really want, like, are you going to wing it right. and go to this party and then, like, not get enough sleep to just do what you got to do at practice? Or is you going to be like, hey, I will catch y'all later. I'm finna hit these books and mm. then I'm just get up. Like, I feel like a lot of females... Some males too, but a lot of females you don't re- they don't really s- feel the need to sacrifice because they're so afraid of missing out on something. Right, 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 right. right. The That's bigger it. picture is just like literally right here. Like I tell my friends all the time, they're like, "Hey, come on, we finna go here." Like, nah, I got practice tomorrow. Like, we can put. I'm a, me personally, I'm a party when I'm where I when need you to can. be. Right. Like, I'm a party where I need to be because it's always going to be there. Like, it's not going to go anywhere. Right. right. There. That's right. another, that's like with the military. Like, it was hard for me to go because like, of course, like, I didn't want to leave my family, but at the end of the day, they're going to be here when you get back. Nothing's mm. going to change. Like, everything is going to be here. So like, if a lot of female athletes, you could just make that sacrifice for this little moment. Like, in the long run, it's going to pay off. Right. It's going to pay right. off. Like, you, that's where that mental toughness and just like, that maturity level kicks in because are you going to just, you still want to be, you can't still like put all this important stuff to the side and then like go do what you want to do, but you want to get to that one dream. Like it's not going to, it don't work like that. It don't that. work like that. Yeah. I like that. I, I like that, man. I do too. Yo, coach, you, you want to leave with something big though? Uh, let's see, man. I think um, just off the dome, because uh, I was trying to think and listen at the same time, yeah. trying to multitask. But, um, I say, man, just don't be afraid. Like, don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. Um, Like, being uncomfortable, make being uncomfortable comfortable. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, it's okay to get out of Troop County. It's okay to get out of wherever your surrounding or your home base. Everything she just said, like, it's going to be there. Mm -hmm. It's, I promise you, it's not going to go anywhere. So, just don't be, don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. Mm, that's I it. dig that. I dig that. Again, man, I appreciate y'all coming through, dropping in. Keep being that special guest. Right on. My boy Mike come in for the Mike O. I appreciate it. Mike O. <laughs> <laughs> He's our own person called him Mike. Well, Mike O. You know what I mean? Coming in, you know, showing a little co-host love today, man. So again, appreciate y'all, no, man. No Everybody, y'all know what it is, baby. Zip them up. Chill. <laughs>